Hello everyone, welcome. Today we'll be studying the blood vessels, specifically in regards to your ATITs exam. So first off, when we hear the term blood vessels, this is a general term used to describe arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. Blood vessels assist the heart by carrying blood to the body and back to the heart. We have arteries that typically direct oxygenated blood away from the heart, and then we have veins that typically bring deoxygenated blood back towards the heart. There is an exception to this general rule. This exception involves the pulmonary system. The right and left pulmonary arteries take deoxygenated blood away from the heart, while the pulmonary veins bring back oxygenated blood back towards the heart. So let's make our way to the capillaries and then back to the heart in order. First, we have the arteries that branch out directly from the heart. They are carrying oxygenated blood to deliver to the body. The first branch of arteries are called your elastic arteries. An example would be the aorta. These are your biggest arteries and they take on the greatest amount of pressure, so they must be super flexible and stretchy to accommodate the pressures from the blood within them. They take on the greatest pressure because remember the blood entering the arteries are coming from your left ventricle. And we know that the left ventricle is ejecting blood at the highest pressure in order to get that blood all across the entire body, including all the way to the tip of your toes, right? So the pressure is super high in these arteries and in arteries in general. Next, we have our arteries that branch off of the elastic arteries. These are called the muscular arteries. They are smaller in diameter and they deliver blood to specific parts of the body. They also have a very thick muscular la layer, hence the name muscular arteries. Following these muscular arteries comes the arterioles. These arterioles feed the capillary beds with blood. They are also special in the way that they have a sphincter circulating around them that helps them contract at certain points. And they are the most highly resistant blood vessels. So their ability to contract and to expand is incredibly accommodating to the pressure of blood within them. Finally, we reach the capillaries, which make up the capillary bed where we have an exchange of materials. Leaving the capillary beds, we have the venules that lead into our veins. It is important to note that when the blood leaves the capillary bed, it's at a greatly significantly decrease pressure as opposed to the blood flowing through the arteries that blood is working with a tremendous amount of pressure pr pushing it towards the body remember from the left ventricle kind of like if you have a water hose on full blast that's like the blood running through the arteries now the veins have no pressure like that it's super significantly lower this would be like when you turn off the hose and some of the water is trying to trickle back into the beginning of the hose adding on to this the blood in your veins is also working against gravity so it needs an adaptation system right in comes the veins valves. These valves are tunica interna that fold into valves. They keep the blood moving forward and keep it from pulling in one area. Two other ways we can help our veins move blood forward and towards the heart are by one, contracting our muscles. Every time our muscles contract, they squeeze against the veins and push the blood upwards towards the heart. This is referred to as muscular milking. Very slow process, but still very effective. Hence why it is so important to keep our bodies moving in order to keep circulation moving in our bodies. We also have this respiratory pump, which basically happens as you breathe. So as we breathe, we change the pressure inside our lungs and the pressure of the blood flowing through the heart and eventually the pressure within our veins. This pressure changes as we breathe in and out, keeps the blood flowing through our venous system. Hence why some people do breathing exercises to calm down their heart rate and blood pressure. Okay, so let's take a close look at the capillaries in the capillary bed. Here we have a capillary bed and surrounding these blood vessels, we have interstitial fluid and we have cells. 
On one side of the capillary bed, we have the arteriole bringing in fresh oxygenated blood along with nutrients. So the arteriole is carrying all the good stuff that the cells are waiting to receive. Now hanging out around the cells and in the interstitial fluid, we have CO2 and waste product. That is sort of left on the curb like recycle and garbage on pickup day. This stuff is waiting to get picked up and carried away. Now this is the setup for an exchange process that is going to happen here in the capillary bed. Oxygen and nutrients are leaving the blood vessels and being dropped off into the interstitial fluid. This oxygen and nutrients will eventually make its way to the cells that need it. At the same time, we have the waste product and CO2 that needs to be picked up by the blood vessels. So the CO2 and the waste is leaving the interstitial fluid and going into the blood vessels. So the work is complete here. Now the blood leaving the capillary bed that is holding on to the waste product and CO2 needs to make its way back up towards the heart and towards the lungs. Now it's going to go back via the venules and eventually reach the blood vessels. This blood will eventually reach the largest vein in the body, the vena cava. So this is the entire flow of blood from the heart to its destination at the capillary bed and then back to the heart. Let's take a step back. The blood vessels have three layers to them, excluding the capillaries. The outermost layer is called the adventitia, which has nerve endings and tiny blood vessels. The middle layer is called the tunica media, which is composed of elastic tissue and muscular tissue, but mostly elastic. And the inner layer is called your tunica intima or tunica interna. This has both muscle and elastic fibers, but mostly muscle tissue. And with that, this concludes the blood vessels. I hope this was helpful for you all. Until next time.